Well, thank you very much for having me. And uh, I really am honored. And uh, I'm a little geeky here because I'm a civics guy. And I really enjoy being around civics. And I also very much enjoy being around like-minded people. It's a very comfortable feeling. See, I, I was raised in an industry. I started acting professionally when I was two. And I was raised in an in, uh, industry that's about eight to one um, against fellows like us, me. Um, so, so I enjoy being around people that think like I do believe the same things I believe in. And I, when I was given this opportunity to come down and maybe say a few words and hang out, and please, if anybody has any you know, individual questions or certain things, I'm not gonna be able to touch on nearly all the aspects of the entertainment business and the, you know, sort of what's been happening there. But I, and I'm not an expert, I am a participant, and I will answer those questions. But being around like-minded people is something that I've enjoyed. And, and several years ago, there was a small group of people in the entertainment business that had lunch together. And they had such a good time being amongst friends that they decided to try it again next week with a bigger crowd. And pretty soon, this fellowship developed in Hollywood where like-minded people could get together and have lunch and have dinner maybe occasionally have a picnic so our children could come, we'd have speakers, and we'd have meetings. And it really is a great place to go. It really is wonderful to go break bread with, with friends. And at one of the meetings, sometimes the meetings are just share meetings where we go around the room and talk. And I, I spoke one time about how good it felt acknowledging to myself that I was a conservative and being at one of these meetings sort of did that. And I physically felt better driving home. In fact, I even drove better <laughs> being a conservative. Now, I will never live that down because virtually every meeting that I go to of this fellowship, somebody comes up and says, hey, you were the guy you are the guy that drives better because you're a conservative. And yes, that is true. Now, I did not roll out of the crib being conservative. Um, listen, I was a McGovern man when I was 13. I'm sorry for any of the California people here, but I voted for Governor Brown, sometimes known as Governor Moonbeam, I think three times. I'm sorry. But you know, it was really cool being a progressive, being a liberal when I was 12. <laughs> it felt really good. But I didn't really have a, like a burning bush moment, some instant moment of clarity where I realized, wait, 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 I'm not that way, I'm conservative. I actually had to ask my wife what the burning bush actually was. Because I'm, I'm not necessarily a, a religious man. Um, I have read the Bible, haven't really retained it too well. It reads a little bit like Shakespeare to me. Um, but I get it, and I was raised with Judeo-Christian values, and I, I, I fully support it. But I had to ask my wife, and she explained to me what it was, and I got it. And I didn't ha have one of those moments as far as being conservative. Um, I just sort of, you know, grew up. And wait, you know what? As a matter of fact, Jimmy Carter was the president at one point as I was growing into a man. And I take that back. I believe President Carter was my burning bush. <laughs> um, I've had an interesting life in show business, having started at such an early age and, and, and been involved in this business. And for a long time, listen, I have not been like, no, nobody's tried to change me. Ideo uh, I, what's the term? Ideology? I didn't change my ideology when I was little. They left me alone. Listen, in show business, they're just trying to make a buck. They're just trying to get a job done. 
At least that's what it, the way it was when I was little. Um, so I didn't have any of that growing up. It was later on when the liberals, and they've some, somehow morphed into progressives. There's actually a fellow who's a self-described socialist running for the Democratic nomination. I thought I would never see the day. But that's the way it is. And uh, I, I had one moment on a movie called Frost Nixon that my brother directed. I was very proud of that movie. I felt like my brother you know, handled it pretty even-handed. You know, I know a lot of people think my brother is kind of a, a flaming lefty. And yes, we sit on different sides of the table. But I'll tell you what, if anybody saw Cinderella Man, Ron did put that scene in where James Braddock gave his welfare money back. So for all the people that say uh, my brother is a flaming lefty, I'm not quite so sure. But anyway, on the set of Frost Nixon, there was an actor, and I'm not going to tell you his name, and he wasn't a main player. I can't even, if I mention even his first name, it'll, somebody can figure it out. But this person was just absolutely bashing President Bush. After he had defended one of our allies whose country had been invaded, Kuwait. So we went over there and started this war. And that led to a whole upheaval of, of political dissatisfaction. And then President Bush, too, came along and, and, and further inflamed the left. And this fellow was going absolutely nuts, disparaging, being rude, condescending, vulgar, towards the President of the United States. And after a couple of minutes of letting this guy rant, I stood up and I explained that I agreed with President Bush, number two, and he's the President of the United States and I respect that office and I was wondering whether he might want to come over to me and look me in the eye and say those same things. Now I know he wasn't going to do anything, I was the director's brother for Christ's sakes. <laughs> but I just felt like it was time to stand up. I had another incident happen a little bit later on where I was actually up in Canada working on a movie, and there was a, a young American actress who was railing against the Tea Party movement. And I don't believe there's a lot of children here, and I'm only going to say the word once. But she was using the term teabagger in the most derogatory, inflammatory way you could possibly imagine. And she was doing it with zeal. And I went over to her and I said, you know, you realize what that term means? And she said, yes. And I go, well, that's very insulting. I agree with a lot of what the Tea Party movement believes in. And as far as I'm concerned, you've insulted me. And when I put it that way, she shut up, at least for a while, at least around me. Now, this was something that Ron was not involved in. But my goodness, just how the left likes to throw bombs. Now, I know right-wingers, you know, from the far right, you know, we've got our idiots too, and we've got people who don't know how to use the language, and we've got people who know how to throw bombs, but, but certainly not like the pitchfork and torch crowd that has risen in the last few years. Because I do believe in the Tea Party movement. I just wish that the word party had not been in there. Because I believe in the movement. I believe in limited government. I believe that, I, I believe all this stuff. This is good stuff. Anybody who is, is demonstrating against Alec is absolutely foolish. But I'll tell you what really turned it. In 1995, I married a woman, still married to her. She's a wonderful lady, Melanie. And uh, she's Croatian, of Croatian descent. And when we got married, she began not explaining, but, but showing her soulful defense of life. And I'd always been a little ambivalent towards the abortion issue, being a man, being a young teenager, and, and I just, I was not thoughtful. But seeing, not seeing, feeling my wife's passion for life really centered it for me. 
Because you know what, folks? That is a human being. That little fella or little lady needs defense, needs respect. And when we start cheapening life, we're on a slippery slope and I know it doesn't head anywhere good. So my wife's passion about this being a life and this being a value, ultimate value, really solidified me. Now I am not down the, down the line conservative on every issue. You know, there are some things I'm kind of liberal about, but I still, just generally speaking, cannot understand the other side. Um, now, after all this happened, I got involved a little bit in local politics. Interesting situation in California, in Southern California. I guess it was a disaster waiting to happen. But my wife and I volunteered, and, and we put um, the, the hangers on the doorknobs. You know, we walked canvas neighborhoods and knocked on doors of, Repu of Republicans that hadn't voted in 10 election cycles and doing all those things. And also being a, a, a person of, of certain celebrity note, I was asked to, to participate, you know, at, at banquets and stuff. And I just, on the local level, I just saw how poor the production values were of local politicians. The sound systems were poor. They would project images using like a high school, you know, projection system in a big room. And they wouldn't have the stage set up right. And right away, from coming from an entertainment background, I realized, you know, presentation is important. And putting a good package together, there's a, there's a skill to it. It's not so much a skill, it takes work. And I think it's really important that on the local level, people really try to put their best foot forward and make, make our ideas look as good as possible. Um, I, I saw that locally. I also had one, one experience. I became friends with a woman named Jane Barnett, who was a longtime member. Uh, she was a longtime uh, Republican chairman of Los Angeles County. She'd been around a long time. And I was friends, she's passed away. She got cancer and passed. Uh, but while she was still in charge, the Tea Party came along. And this was an influx of a lot of energy and a lot of vitality and a lot of people. And Jane was really hoping that, that this would translate, that these Tea Party people would come and help. And yet the Tea Party, at least around where I lived, they sort of had their own agenda and they walked to the beat of their own drummer and they almost kind of clashed heads with the Republican people in Los Angeles. So Jane Barnett was genuinely pretty disappointed when push came to shove. The Republican Party in Los Angeles, although it remains the cash register of the nation for the Republicans, we can't get anybody elected. And, and yet this Tea Party you know, influx did not help at all. And Jane was saddened by that. She was saddened by this extra bunch of people who were interested in civics that they did not sort of help. They only almost hurt. Um, I, I believe in America, and I believe in the right side of the dinner table. And my brother and I have long, long conversations. Sometimes it can be very argumentative about, you know, the fact where he sits on the left and I sit on the right, and, and he's five years older than me, and we have a loving, great relationship, and we can say almost anything to each other, and we go absolutely crazy at each other. But you know what? At the end of every conversation, we always take a deep breath and say we love each other, and we let it go. And that that came from my dad, who when we were little, Ron, Ron's five years older than me, we would fight over things like baseball cards and toys. You know, I'd be four or five, he'd be nine or 10. And we'd tangle and dad would pull us apart. And it wasn't so much what he said, it was the way he said it. He said, boys, 
you guys are going to want to be friends when you grow up, so why don't you just knock it off? And Ron and I would both look at Dad and look at each other, and you know, those baseball cards didn't mean much anymore. And, and Ron and I have a great loving relationship, and, and uh, you know, I just wish for one second he would read Ted Cruz's book. I'm actually thinking about getting an autographed copy signed and sent to their house, but my wife thinks it's a bad idea. I think I'm going to do it. You know, folks, I, I so enjoy being around like-minded people, much like my experience in Hollywood. Uh, it's just, it makes me feel good. It's not the San Diego weather, it's the people. And I bet you one thing, I bet you after spending two, two and a half days with you folks, I'm going to be a better driver for a long time to come. <laughs> Thank you guys very much. <laughs>